Yeah, I'm no. just looking. I'm looking for something to verify that you're a U.S. Marshal. All right. Uh, Sir, what is your name? Derry Lambert. Okay, what district do you work out of? I work out of Texas. All right, do me a favor. Just go ahead and turn around for me. Dan, put your hands behind your back. So you're going to be arrested for impersonating a police officer, okay? I'm going to go ahead and read this to you, okay? Some people have a strange obsession with pretending to be someone they are not. Whether it's for fame, fortune, or fun, these imposters often go to great lengths to fool others into believing their lies. But what happens when these imposters are caught in the act and exposed by the real deal? I'm going to show you right now. We found the most shocking example of this, which is also one of the most ridiculous cases of a fake U.S. Marshal. On July 31st, 2023, a man named Gary Lambert was driving his pickup truck with flashing lights and sirens on a busy highway in Marion County, Florida. Lambert was pulled over and was wearing a black hat with the words Police U.S. Marshal on it. He claimed he was responding to a shooting involving two gangs and a four-wheeler with a hole on and that he was working for the U.S. Marshals a federal law enforcement agency that specializes in fugitive apprehension and witness protection. But there was one problem. He was not a U.S. Marshal at all. He was a fraud. See your other hand for me? Where are you headed to? Okay, you have your driver's license on? What's we'll the deal with the purple lights? Yeah, they're purple tonight. Where are you headed to? A shooting in Maryland. The police officer then confirms once more whether the pickup truck is Gary's personal vehicle or if it was provided to him by the authorities, as U.S. Marshals do not have the authorization to use sirens and lights on their personal vehicles. Hey, sir. So the vehicle is your vehicle. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because yeah. I'm just looking. I'm looking for something to verify that you're a U.S. Marshal. All right. Oh, what the voicemails? Uh, I left him a message. Okay. All right. Yeah, just hang tight with me. I got to go back to shift in about two hours. So. Where's shift at? Well, Where's shift I got to get my car. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, hopefully we can get this resolved really quickly. The officer then calls headquarters to verify the details of the man, confirming whether he is a registered and authentic U.S. Marshal by checking his name and details in the records. During the call, the officer asks the man for his name and other pertinent details such as his posting location and his current activity at that specific moment. The phone wants to ask you a few questions. Okay. All right, go ahead. Sir, what is your name? Derry Lambert. Okay, what district do you work out of? I work out of Texas. The man responds that he was called by his authorities and informed that there are two gangs down the street engaging in shooting, vandalizing property, and breaking into people's houses. But they got me down, they got me down in Florida right now, looking into uh, Marion Oaks. There's two gang members, two gangs out there that are riding on a four-wheeler with a pole on it, busting into people's houses. Okay, so and they got a call, so I chased... What's that? Texas do you work out of? Dallas. Okay. My second house. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I know exactly. Yeah, exactly. After having some conversation with the headquarter, the cop gets to know that this man is a fraud and he is not any marshal and he is pretending to be one. Upon realizing this, the cop does what every police officer would do in this situation. He arrests the fake U.S. Marshal for impersonating a government official and misusing his fake powers by adding sirens and lights into his vehicle. All right, All right do me a favor. Just go ahead and turn around for me. Dan, put your hands behind your back. For what? I'll explain it to you. Well... So you're going to be arrested for impersonating a police officer, okay? I'm going to go ahead and read this to you, okay? Even after being arrested, the man refused to admit that he was pretending to be a government official and not a U.S. Marshal. He was continuing to tell that he is a U.S. Marshal 
and he was assigned a job to arrest two gangs down the streets of Texas. And one thing which I noticed was he was looking kind of high. I mean, he might have taken some weed or other substances as he was not looking in his full consciousness. Right. And who do you work for? Who are you employed by? The United States Marshal Service. U.S. Marshal Service. Okay. Um, he told me that you don't have your credentials with you, but they're in your... They're in my charger. In your charger. A work vehicle? Right. Okay. Who's the charger registered to? It's registered to the Marshal Service. Marshal The cop again questions the man, asking why the U.S. Marshals would permit him to install sirens and lights on his personal vehicle if it indeed belonged to him. That's my personal vehicle. So why would the Marshals outfit your personal vehicle with lights and sirens? In, in Texas, it's not like here. Okay. You, you don't have cars like this. We you have, have a Florida truck. tag. I know. The police officer then goes on to check the man's car along with him. The cop investigates that how does the siren and the light system which the fake US Marshal has fitted in his truck works. And then, after some time, the cop again returns to the man, which was sitting handcuffed inside the police car and asks him that for how long he has been working as a US Marshal. Turn, turn the knob off. Hey, how long you worked for the uh, U.S. Marshals? About three years. Three years? Okay. One on it. I'm sorry? I'm finishing up at Votech and with Lacucci right now to go to work for Man County. So. To do what? To be a cop. And then comes the man's biggest nightmare. The cop calls a real U.S. Marshal. And then there occurs a face-to-face -face conversation between the real U.S. Marshal and the fake U.S. Marshal. The fake U.S. Marshal continues to tell about his team members and that they were waiting for him in Texas as there's a very important mission which he has to complete before the end of the day. But he was not aware of the fact that the person who is now doing investigation with him and standing right in front of him is a real U.S. Marshal. Coming down the road. I get a call on my cell phone, hey, they see the foaler out there on the drone, can you come help us? Who's that? So you called you? My squad in Texas. If you look through my phone, you'll see the 941 area code. By squad? What do you mean by squad? They sent three or four of us down here. Who is they? The Rangers. The Rangers? Which Rangers? Like the baseball team? No. Hell no. Okay, so what okay. ranges? The Marshals. The Marshals? Yeah. In the very next moment, the real U.S. Marshal asks the fake one about his district. As every Marshal is provided with a district, the fake U.S. Marshal replies with a random number, claiming it as his squad number. And to end the debate, the real U.S. Marshal takes out his credentials and badge, showing them to the man. He informs him that he is a real Marshal and the fake one is not as he didn't have any badge or credentials. So what, um, where do you work out of Texas? Dallas. Dallas? Yes. What's your district? Well, we just if have you're, headquarters in the if you're a U.S. Squad, Marshal, squad you can know 641. your district. 641. 641? That's our squad. Okay. But there's only a few of us here. A few of you? Would I be one of those? No. I'm not a U.S. Marshal? I don't know. I see a badge. Well, here's my credentials. I am actually a special deputy U.S. Marshal. Yeah. Here are my credentials. Yeah. Mine are in my car. These, I, your credentials I, like I this have, are in there. I have one just identically to that. And then the man finally tells that what he does in the U.S. Marshal, he says that he does running and raids and other stuffs related to the task force. This man was living a serious delusional life. Like, okay, so where, do you work for the Fugitive Task Force? Do you work for the District Marshals? No. Do you, work, who do you I work, work for? I work for the Task Force. You work for the Task Force? Like people running, who do raids. All I do is raid. In the end, the man says something so stupid that the real U.S. Marshal gives him what he says a pro tip, a tip which the man will remember for his whole life. You, okay. you don't know about the drones out there flying over? Sir, there is nothing know. like that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you a little tip, pro tip, okay? There's only three of us in this county. 
you are not one of the other two. That's a pro tip. The man was then arrested and sent to jail. The charges against him included false impersonation of a law enforcement officer, unlawful use of blue lights, unlawful use of sirens, possession of firearms during the commission of a felony, possession of diazepam, and introduction of contraband to a detention facility.